Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Dan, that's Stephen, and we're a married couple living full time in our 1996 VW camper van, Daisy. In our last video we showed you the start of our journey as we gave up our old lives and everything we knew for a new life on the road of, well, we're not entirely sure, but that's what we aim to find out. So join us as we head on more adventures, adjust to our new world, and the reality of our first winter in the van begins to bite. So sit back, relax, and come along dear. We've arrived in Cornwall and there are two reasons we know this. One, it's raining and two, the roads have suddenly got thinner and that's Cornwall. We've seen it now. Let's just turn around and go back, shall we? That's it, I'm leaving. That's it, I'm leaving. Had enough. So tomorrow I'm going to find King Arthur's sword. Might put it on eBay. Yeah, might get 50 quid for it. Genuine article. Hang on, it, you've got to put it out of the stone first, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I can do that. Uh, yeah, sure you can. Anyway, so we headed to Tintagel where the weather was horrendous and the castle closed due to high winds, but we had a good time despite only getting about five seconds of footage. A good start to this video, I'm sure you'd agree. <laughs> So in spite of that, <laughs> we, we took so many lovely photographs. Stephen took a beautiful photograph of the beach with some light appearing over the, in the sky, all the waves crashing and the pebbles, and it was just these steep cliffs. It was just amazing. And we could have spent all day there just photographing the same thing in the rain. So actually there is some beauty in, uh, in visiting Cornwall in the winter because nobody's around, not really, and you can get to everything. Yeah, it's not warm and you've got to face extreme weather, but Put then some you, clothes you on. Get it all. Put some clothes on. Put some layers on. Take an umbrella. <laughs> you know, exactly. take a poncho. The number one for me, and nobody seems to say it, is the lack of light, the short span of time that you've got between waking up with the sun coming up and the sun rising. Yeah. That's the <clears> worst <throat> because... You don't you have much time to fit in to do anything and it doesn't matter if you're doing nothing or even if you just got to go to the shops and back and it's a day of whatever, then it, there isn't much you can do because once it gets dark, um, you're very restricted. And if you haven't figured out where you're staying that night or what you're doing, then it can be a bit of a mad rush. And when the weather's bad and you're in small country lanes, as is what Cornwall seems to be made of for the majority of the time, um, then, yeah, it's, it can be quite tricky. I don't mind I don't mind that it gets dark and having to be in the van in the evening because I quite like being in the van in the evening I don't want to be out forever but it's just trying to get everything done so because we're nice clean boys we like to do the blankets every morning it's probably quite important I'm sure there's a more graceful and natural way to do this but nobody's told me yet it's nobody's usually better on a windy day to be honest because the wind does it for you this was followed by a quick and extremely windy trip to Polesheath Beach before we headed on and came across a minor stumbling block. If we had anything bigger than our little camper van Daisy, then I don't think we'd be getting down these roads. Because we're barely squeezing through as it is. Good morning. So, we've encountered a bit of a problem this morning. Um, which is really convenient because Storm, Storm Barra, or however you pronounce that, is right upon us not that you can tell right now it's really sunny maybe it's past we've had loads of wind and rain in the night we've parked up somewhere safe we've sort of battened down the hatches it was really cozy and that was nice but when we found a park up that wasn't quite right in terms of when we pulled away we found something there was a strange noise on the tire it sounded like it was going flat what what's like a big bolt in it or something <laughs> yeah. 
We are now waiting for the AA. <laughs> we've called the AA out because although we've only got a puncture, please bear in mind we're new to this, but we haven't got stupidly, ridiculously, we haven't got the right tool to change the tire. Stephen knows how to change a tire. We have a spare tire, but we just don't have the right tool. Watch out for bolts on the road, I guess. And remember to carry the most basic of tools, clearly. Once that was sorted, we headed to our next stop of Upton Torrens Beach. So we're on Upton Torrens Beach, somewhere between Hale, just east of St Ives. And we're walking on all these sand dunes, which are mostly covered in kind of vegetation growth. And it, the weather's not very good. The wind is so much better than it was the last few days after the storm. But now it's overcast and rainy, so actually, in some respects, it's a little bit worse. It's fine. But we're going to explore and see what's about and have a wander. And hopefully, from my understanding, this is quite a big beach. So, we could be down here for hours or five minutes. Let's just see. We've got to get there first though. It looks like we're quite far back. How massive that is. It just goes on for miles. Okay, so we've been walking about 20 minutes now, and this incredible beach. It's not as easy to get onto as it looks because you get through the sand dunes and then it's high cliffs, reasonably high cliffs. And we are trying to find a path down because we've seen people on there. So we finally made it down and oh my God, <laughs> this is worth every second. I could spend hours down here. This beach is absolutely huge. It's pure sand. The sea is beautiful, there's cliffs behind it with the dunes behind it, there's hardly anyone about. There's a bit of drizzle, a little bit of wind, not that much. It's incredible. I, I'm so glad we made the effort to do this. And it's just one giant, it must be a few miles long. It just goes on and on and on. So we keep saying, we've got to head back, we've got to head back, we're hungry, I need a wee. We've got to walk back to the sand dunes to walk up and every time we keep finding something else to explore and look at. So we found this little cave, probably not a cave, it's probably a shadow or something. And <laughs> we're gonna have a quick look and then see what we can, see what it is. Stephen's hoping to find, he was wanting to find some mussels. Yes. I'm hungry, I'll eat them now. He'll just eat them raw, shell included, because he's a troll. Okay, so there was there was nothing in the cave. <laughs> it was a little cave, but there was a few little rock pools which were quite fun to look into. Um, seen a few fish and different rock pools around here. And one thing I'll say about all of this today, life makes you cynical. Life, everything about it makes you cynical. It, it takes the spirit out of you. It, it's determined to do that. And doing this sort of thing is just, it feels like, rediscovering a little bit of magic you know it's like I, I can believe in magic again and this makes me believe in magic again because 
it's like a giant fantasy, but you can live it. You can go and see this. Some people would be like, that's a bloody nightmare. It's raining, but it isn't. It's brilliant. Stephen, do you believe in magic, Stephen? Huh? Do you believe in magic? Um, no. Oh, he's not been doing this for long enough. He needs more time. He'll believe in magic soon, trust me. Give it about 10 more years and he might lose that cynical edge. Maybe 20, maybe when he's 85, I don't know. Mine's disappeared in about three weeks. Of course it has. Of course it has. Do I look 21 yet? Mm, no, you don't. Well, with that adventure done, we had to make a dash back across the country, briefly stopping in Dorset before landing back in Kent as Daisy needed some repairs. Oh god. It is quarter to seven and we're taking Daisy in for repairs. I just want to go back to sleep. While Daisy had her bits mended, we took a stroll around the classic seaside town of Margate, Stephen's home for many years and one we got to appreciate in a different light on our travels. So this little lady is... She is Mrs Booth, the shell lady of Margate. To be honest, I actually thought this had been here forever. But I believe it's only been there since 2008. I think she's keeping watch. It's kind of like a lighthouse and I'd be scared of Mrs. Booth, to be honest. She looks a little bit scary. Don't mess with Mrs. Booth. With the van repaired, we wandered aimlessly. Let's not pretend there's a plan here and caught up with some of our exercise routines. Well, one of us did, and it didn't end too well. <laughs> and that was Stephen's contribution. After this, we headed on a woodland walk as autumn began to come to a close. You know, this has just been one of those days where we've had nothing planned and it's been so nice. You could just get up and be like, where are we gonna go? Where should we visit? And it hasn't really been like that much for the last week or two. It's always been something, there's been Christmas coming up or repairs on the van that need doing or whatever else it is, other plans. And today was just one of those pure adventure days and it's really paid off. Like just walking through these woods, it's Kingswood. It's near Ashford. Um, it's one of the many woods on the North Downs way. And we've discovered all these different mushroom types. We don't know what we're talking about. It doesn't matter. It's just so fun just trying to find them and then figuring out what they are later on. Tip number one, remember to bring the damn book, which I always forget. And now it's like, we're just aimlessly wandering. Stephen's over there somewhere. We'll meet up, 20 minutes, we'll go wandering. Meet up again. Obviously, don't go too far because it's really big and we'll get lost. But, yeah, it's been a bit magical, actually. And this is kind of what it's all about. Are you whittling? What are you whit? <laughs> oh, no, don't. That actually scares me a bit. 
brilliant. Well, it's a bit like a horror film out here. Yeah. What have you made? Well, I just think it's... Mysterious. Oh, they look like little antlers. Yeah. It's interesting. You say that as an ornament. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you could <laughs> try. <laughs> if you whittled all that back and shined it up and made it look nice and stuck it in a piece of wood, somebody would... I thought it. you meant now, like you just finished it. He only picked it up two seconds ago. There you go, done. 20 quid, please. Could be a water dowser. Divine rock. No. What are they called? Oh, I know what you mean. Divine Nimrod. Oh, somebody knows. Well, I thought it looked like something. It, it does look like, like something. There's lots of potential. It's wet, though, isn't it? Yeah. It off now. You definitely make it into something. So we've stopped in a place called All Marshes. It's All Marshes, it's near Faversham. It's between the Isle of Sheppey and it's the Swale Estuary. So you've kind of got, a, I don't even know what you call it. It's not really a river, but it's kind of like part of where the, the North Sea comes into the Thames Estuary. But the amazing thing about this place is there is a fresh water spring. Why haven't we got more of these? <laughs> Really good. Right, so Stephen's going to drink the water as well. Look how lovely that is. I mean, obviously the flowers somebody's put there. Mm. <laughs> that doesn't look convincing. It actually tastes really nice. Well, I mean, it tastes like clean, good water. It does taste like clean water. It's lovely. I expected it to be cold for some reason. Yeah, it's not freezing cold. That's weird. But then the weather's not freezing. Anyway, it's very nice water. It's there for everybody to drink and it's a good place to fill up your water bottles. So, perfect. As the festive season drew closer, we headed to my mum's where we spent some time before planning our next trip away. That's where we'll end the video over some footage of me making this Christmas ice cream cake because frankly, why not? If you've enjoyed our adventures so far, even when they don't make sense, please like and subscribe to our channel as we'd be really grateful for your support. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Thank you.